That's not a surprise. There's another fish. That's hooked in the mouth. That's a dang nice fish. My goodness, this is a nice fish. That is a big walleye. Look at that. Nice. That is a gorgeous. Thanks to Kakawea walleye. Fell victim to the jigging wrap. What is up, fisher people? It is an absolutely gorgeous day out here on Lake Sakakawea. And we're gonna do a video all about the jigging wrap. We're gonna talk about when is the best time to use a jigging wrap, why you would want to use a jigging wrap, and of course, how to best use the jigging wrap. And before we do that, we're gonna start with the gear. We'll get that out of the way. I like to use a seven foot medium fast rod. And I like to use braided line with a fluorocarbon leader and a snap at the end for quick changing abilities. And in terms of the jigging wrap itself, if I'm fishing earlier season stuff, shallower water stuff, I can get by with the sevens to kind of save my arm and my wrist a little bit. When it comes to the fall time, I really prefer the number nines. You can also get by with a medium light rod and it's probably a little easier to work. The problem with that is the tip of the rod gets so whippy that a lot of times you wind up getting that line twisting around the top of the rod when you're snapping in. Okay, so we got that out of the way. When do you use jigging wraps? Well, in my opinion, you either use them on one end of the spectrum or the other. If the fish are really finicky or if the fish are really aggressive. If they're really finicky, you can use a jigging wrap to trigger a bite. When you're not getting them to take live bait and other sorts of presentations, it would seem counterintuitive, but it can actually work really well sometimes. On the other side of the spectrum, like I said, if the fish are really aggressive, I don't know a faster, quicker, more efficient way to catch them than with jigging wraps because you can cover so much water and work them so fast. Kind of like you can do with crankbaits, but they're more surgical and efficient because with a crankbait, like you set up your spread, you start your pass, and you're covering a certain area of ground with, with a crankbait. With a jigging wrap, if you're cruising along an area, you see fish on the side here, side here, you can throw exactly where you want to throw, hit that spot quick, reel it in, hit another spot, you can be trolling 20 feet and hit 40 feet and hit five feet. You can cast up and down contours, all that, all that kind of stuff. I think I missed my first bite there. And I also lost my train of thought. So it becomes very efficient that way. So how that works out in terms of seasonal things. Well, you can get a good jigging wrap bite sometimes on shallow days in the spring, like post spawn even especially if you get some wind going, you got aggressive fish up there. Then I find that that bite kind of fades out a little bit for me, at least out here on Lake Sakakawea. And then it picks up a lot, sort of late June, early July, when the water temps start to near 70 degrees and the fish are really starting to rev up. And then of course, it also becomes a really good presentation in the fall, partly to trigger those bites. And also if you're dealing with fish that are pretty deep on deep structure, it's just a really good way to get a bait down to the fish super, super fast without needing to use lead core, without needing to use four ounce, three ounce bottom monsters, all that kind of stuff. It's a really quick way to attack those fish. Got some fish straight down on the graph here. Okay, so why? Why do I use jigging wraps? Like I was alluding to a little bit ago, they're just so freaking versatile. You can work them vertically, you can cast them, and casting is when I think they become almost like a super weapon because vertical is nice if you got fish on the graph and you're trying to get them to go. But once you start casting them, you can cover so much water so fast. And let's say you're in a boat and you've got a bunch of people trolling bottom bouncers. You got your bottom bouncers, you're cruising around in 15, 20 feet of water, whatever it is. If you got three, four bottom bouncers all out there already, you know, there's not a lot of point in having one more bottom bouncer out there. But if you've got a jigging wrap that you're throwing around, you can hit fish that those bottom bouncers never will out to the side. 
So that's why I love doing that because it, it gives you a double threat in the sense that you're covering water right under the boat with live bait and then you're fan casting these jigging wraps searching for other things at the same time and you can just really clean up a spot in a hurry and also find out you know if you're trolling in 15 feet of water and you want are there fish up there in three feet of water right now in that wind the jigging wrap will tell you if there's fish up there in three feet of water potentially so will side imaging but you can kind of confirm it if they're actually going to bite right in terms of the situations the structure the kind of places i like to fish them it works really well if you're fishing some kind of hump or point or ledge where you got some sort of a contour change. So like I said, you can be moving your boat in a certain depth and you can work the jigging wrap up and down the contour lines. That said, can you work a jigging wrap on a flat? Absolutely you can, but if you're doing that, I would almost definitely say you need to be trolling with your boat, you need to be casting them, and probably you wanna go look for fish on your side imaging and make sure you're on pods of fish because flats are big and expansive and the fish aren't always necessarily gonna cover every single spot on those flats. They're gonna be in pockets and pods cruising here and there. So if you spend some time driving around seeing fish on side imaging or underneath the boat on your 2D or your down imaging, then you can start to attack those fish with the jigging wraps. It's not probably as effective, but it can be as long as you stay on the fish. There's the first hookup of the day. Looks like a decent little wally. Got him while I had turned the camera off to kind of reset and start my next segment. You can see he got it in the mouth. Jigging wrap fish acquired. Now, if you're new to jigging wrap fishing, you will find that a lot of times you'll hook fish in funny places. You won't always catch them in the mouth because of the nature of what you're doing and the erraticness of this bait. Fish will come in, check it out, and the next time you rip it up, you might just grab them in the side of the face or you might hook them in the belly or the tail or something like that. So that does happen quite frequently. It's something to, to prepare for. And of course, those fish are technically not legal fish that you're supposed to keep. If you don't get at least one hook in front of the gill plate, so keep that in mind. But yeah, to get into the method now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. One is, we'll start with like positionally where you do it. You can do it vertical or you can cast it. So there's those two options. And then once you got the positional thing decided or if you're vertical, then what's your boat doing? Are you sitting still or is your boat moving? Are you trolling with it? Then after that, it comes down to what's the action you're actually trying to give it. The standard sort of vertical jigging wrap thing that a lot of people do where it kind of started with ice fishing is basically just the pull and drop kind of thing, right? Just like that, just to rip it up and let it flutter down, hit the bottom, always on a slack line. And people will talk about sometimes following it down to feel the bite. I don't disagree with that, but the goal is to like, you want to follow it somewhat closely, but still give it just a hair of slack so that it can, it can fall freely. But if you got just a little bit of slack where it falls freely, you can still feel that twitch like you would on a jig bite, a thump or a tick or whatever, and be able to set the hook. So you're trying to give it just enough. And that's why if you have high vis braid, if you got color line, that really helps you watch where that line is to be able to follow it down and know, okay, I can see a little bit of slack in the line so that it can free fall, but it's still somewhat tight that if a fish does smack it, I'll be able to feel that because braid transfers a lot of vibration. You can feel everything on braid. So it doesn't have to be perfectly tight, but it has to be close enough to feel it. That said, a lot of times, you'll just go up to rip it the next time and they'll just be waiting the fish on. So you don't have to feel it all the time, but sometimes you might miss a few bites if you don't. And then you can kind of play around with, you know, how aggressive do you want to be with it? Sometimes it takes a different cadence on a different day. So a lot of times, I think in the earlier seasons when I'm fishing jigging wraps, I'm working them a little more subtly. It might be a little more of just kind of a wrist pop like that. Let it hit the bottom, give it some time. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. 
And then you can go with like some sweeps and some pulls. Ooh, I got some big marks on the graph I want to try to get to. And then like in the fall time sometimes, or if, like if you're really trying to trigger a bite, I really start to rip those things. And that's where it really becomes kind of a shoulder buster where people are just, you know, cracking it as hard as they possibly can. Just trying to get as much erratic action as possible to trigger a strike, like, and really move that bait in the water. And that's where these things get reputations for being shoulder busters and why some people don't like to do it because it's a bit exhausting. But you don't have to fish it that way. You can fish with some smaller pops if you want to and it still can be effective. Then you can also do the double pop kind of stuff. And you can see how like you do the first pop and the second pop and it kind of boom, boom. It really gets that thing moving higher in the water column if, you're, if fish will come up and chase it. That sometimes can trigger a bite. Other times, you can just kind of let it sit on the bottom a little longer between pops. Um, if you, especially if you're doing the casting thing, because you're then working it more horizontally. And when it sits down there, sometimes you get a fish, you'll feel them rattle it right on the bottom while it's sitting there. Because they saw it move, and then they hunted it down, and then they took the bait. So you start playing with variations of that in terms of, do I want to troll and rip behind the boat? Do I want to spot lock? and rip right below me. Do I want to troll and cast? What I'm doing right now is I'm on a big shelf. I got the boat in 20 feet where I'm seeing some of the deepest fish. And then there's some fish that are out a little shallower because the wind's pushing up onto the shelf. So I'm trolling in 20, pitching up into like five to 10 and working it all the way back, trying to find fish anywhere between 20 foot and shore, basically. And then I got them pinned in that way. And then you'll start to get a feel for, you know, where am I getting strikes? Where are they coming? And then you might dial in your casts to not waste as much time. Like if I'm getting a ton of bites up in three foot of water, I'll just cast it out there, rip it five, six times, and then reel it back into the boat as fast as I can, get it right back out there. I'm not gonna waste any time in the deeper water. Whereas if I'm not getting any bites till I get close to the boat, I'm not gonna bomb a cast out there all the time. I'm just gonna start doing shorter range pitches to stay in the fish that way. So that's when to do it, why you would do it, how to do it. And now we're just gonna catch some fish. I guess the one other thing I would add is like, I can't talk enough about how, how effective I think jig traps can be, how efficient they can be. Like if I had one thing that I was gonna do, like if somebody said, you need to go out there and catch walleyes right now and your life depends on it, and you need to catch them as fast as possible. I'm just gonna go into an area, get to the spot where I think is the deepest fish will be, start cruising my boat and casting those jigging wraps. That's a nice fish. Casting those jigging wraps as much as I can and just working fish into the boat. I don't know a better way to do it. Obviously bottom bouncers work amazing on Lake Sakakawea and a lot of other places, but if you really wanna put the herd on fish quick, and be as efficient and effective as possible and fish fast. It's just such a great method. That's a little better fish than the last one. Bit it in the mouth again. Let's see if I can flip him. I don't know, he's not hooked very good. Woo! Got him. Nice 18 inch fish. In the boat, hooked right in the corner of the mouth. You know what, let's just do this. Let's show him off with the jigging wrap in his mouth. Right, that's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Get a nice picture there. I am using a number seven right now. Um, I'm gonna play around with some nines here too. See what works better. I don't have any, uh, I've been talking about that six pack custom jigging wrap stuff that I got from Craig Kramer, 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 Craig Kramer. <laughs> I don't have, he doesn't have any number sevens. He's got all number nines and the stuff he gave me. I hadn't been using a lot of sevens at the time I talked to him either. So that's not a surprise. There's another fish. Um, but I do dig his jigging wraps as well. If that's hooked in the mouth, that's a dang nice fish. It kind of acts like it is hooked in the mouth. So right now I got the sevens on. I'll work some of the nines later. I gotta get this fish in though. That's hooked in the mouth, it's nice. I'm liking the way this is going. I'm gonna hit spot lock here. Let the boat swing around. 
so I can play this fish a little bit. Loosen up my drag, make sure he can pull if he needs to. That's the other thing too is these fish can come unpinned pretty easily if you put a lot of pressure on them. And even more so when you're using the medium fast rod instead of the medium light. So I really like to have that drag nice and loose after I hook the fish. To hook the fish, you want to keep some drag on there. Wow. But keeping the fish hooked, Judas, keeping the fish hooked, it's nice to have a little play in there because that rod doesn't have a ton of play when you got a medium fast. All the action is up top. My goodness, this is a nice fish. Holy cow. Make sure that drag can peel. That's good. That is a big walleye. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> good start. Good start to the jig and wrap day for sure. Every fish got consecutively bigger. That is a gorgeous Lake Sakakawea walleye. Fell victim to the jig and wrap. <laughs> Using that uh, chrome perch, glow perch, whatever you call it right now, number seven. And I'm gonna put Craig's custom on here in a minute. Now that we got three on this, see how the custom one does with some of these Lake Sakakawea Walters. We'll get that 22, three inch fish back in the water. Revved up. Boy, with those three fish catches already, we got a good video, but I've only been here for 20 minutes, so I wanna keep catching some fish. So there's a custom I got from Craig. No classic perch color, similar to what I was using before. Not quite as flashy and chromey. I find that, uh, and this probably holds true for anything, not just jigging wraps, but on uh, cloudier days, overcast days, I really like the darker colors. That purple descent is my absolute favorite. And when it comes to sunnier days, I like to use the perchy colors. There you go. I like the perchy colors. I like the orange colors. Even like the, you know, like a silver minnow chrome colored thing can work pretty good. That's not quite as big a fish, but they're biting it though. Woo! No gut hook fish yet. Four fish all in the mouth, that's cool. Sunny days, colorful stuff, bright stuff. Cloudy days, darker stuff. Purples, blues, darker blues, blacks. We got a little pelican following. It's always a good thing when the pelicans are falling, that means you're catching fish. Pelicans know what's up, for sure. If I hook a fish right now with my left arm, I'm gonna be in trouble. I haven't gotten any to go vertical yet, really, and there are days where that just doesn't work as much, and I don't know if it has more to do with the fact that they don't want you sitting right on top of them, if they can sense that, or if it's more about uh, they just want to chase a bait, or if it's more about covering water, or if it's more about you're getting shallower fish when you're casting, you know, shallower fish are feeding better. But there's definitely days where casting is just so much better than vertical. And I'm telling you, if you've caught fish with jigging wraps before, and you're like, ah, I don't know, it's okay, I've caught a few, cast a jigging wrap, it will change your life. And the other thing about it, I think a lot of people are worried that they're gonna get it snagged or they're gonna tangle up the line or mess it up when they're casting it. And if you just cast a few, you'll get over the line tangle thing. You'll start to work through that. They do flip a little bit. The line gets caught on the hooks once in a while, but you'll get over that. It's not that big a deal. And in terms of snags, if you're fishing them around trees, yeah, that's a terrible idea. Weeds, not great unless they're really sparse. But if you're fishing in rock, unless it's huge boulders, if you're in gravel and rock and you're ripping it and you're keeping a good rod tip angle up and you're not like ripping it straight. If you're ripping it sideways, that could be a problem. But if you keep that rod up and you're using your wrist and you pop it up, the amount of snags I get on these things, 
are so far and few between anymore. And if I do get a snag, oftentimes you can get it out pretty easily. Do I lose jigging wraps? Yes, of course I lose jigging wraps. Do I lose a lot of them? No. But if you haven't tried casting jigging wraps, try it. I'm telling you, it will change your life. The fish that I was on here, I seem to have run out of. So I'm gonna go look for some more fish and keep working the jigging wrap. All right, I just cruised down the shelf here, found another little pocket, fairly concentrated fish. Spot lock first. I'm just gonna spot lock, make sure I cast on the fish I saw. See if I can catch the, the spot locked fish. And then if I don't, I'm gonna hit the cruise button and start moving down the shelf. Because sometimes certain fish just aren't active and they just don't want it. So this to me is like a run and gun method. Like you get in there, you get out. You give them the presentation. Do you want it? No, okay, I'm gone. Do you want it? No, okay, I'm gone. I tell some people it's like speed dating. Like, are you interested? No, okay. Are you interested? No, okay. Are you interested? Maybe they are. <laughs> like, don't waste your time with fish that don't want to bite it. Hey, Pelican. And I'm getting the sense that these fish aren't gonna bite it. And I'm gonna keep moving. I take my sweatshirt off this saw it. Let's get back on the move and catch some fish. There's another fish. He hasn't really done a lot of fighting yet. Usually once they get close to the boat here, that's where they start to do it. Ah, we starting to hunker down. It's in the mouth again. Another nice fish there. Oh, he T-boned it. Just T-boned it. Right there, he's got everything. Another solid. That's a skinny fish. That's kind of a weird... He's got like a bend here. Like, I don't know if his spine's kind of awkward. He's got like a lump in there or something. This is either a nice fish or our first snagged specimen. I might get off if I lift him. Nope. Just a really nice quality fish. Big, chunky, 18, 19. It's good stuff. My hands make that fish look a lot smaller. That's, that's like perfect eating class fish right there. This pelican just having so much fun here. He really likes hanging out with me. I don't mind hanging out with him, he's kind of a cool guy. Haven't got a fish for him yet. I'm not gonna give him a fish either. Unless I catch a gold eye, then I'll throw that to him. Oh, mama. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, get over here. Let's go to the other side. It's a nice fish. Success on the major pod. Got one of them to go anyway. If you want to get some of these custom jigging wraps from Craig, by the way, you can check out his Facebook page at Six Pack Custom Tackle, or I think it still says Six Pack Custom Cranks, but he's expanded into more than crankbaits. You can obviously get some of the designs that I got if you want one of those, or if you want to have your own custom creation. He can make about anything that you can think of. But what I really like about it is the paint job. The paint just does not come off very fast. If you've ever had a, a standard off-the-shelf jigging wrap, you'll know how fast the paint can come off of that stuff. I don't have that problem with these. And they catch fish, like any other jigging wrap does. I'm not going to say it's a better jigging wrap, because it's not. It's a jigging wrap with a better paint job. 
and you can get any design you want if that matters to you. And they're still not that expensive. You basically sells them for the same or even cheaper price than standard jigging wraps you get in a store. Also, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button so that it helps other people that might like the video find it. And if you want to see more of the videos like this, you can always subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can do that on Patreon and get some neat little perks. You could even get exclusive fisher person insider fishing reports. If you're somebody that fishes the Lake Sakakawea area often. Other than that, I'm just going to keep trying to catch more fish. There's another one. That is your first snagged fish. <laughs> Wind picked up a little bit again, so maybe we'll get that bite revved up again. There's another fish. Doesn't feel huge. <laughs> but he bit it in the mouth. Not sure if he's snagged or not. In the mouth. Decent fish. Look at that guy run. That's fun. Nice fish. Hey oh, stick out your fins. Another fish. This is one of those, uh, if it's in the mouth, it's okay. We're gonna find out together what we got here. It's a nice fish. Bit in the mouth. Got him in. There's your jigging wrap fish. Holy cow. Next cast, this one hit it and took off like a missile. <laughs> I got him right in the tail. Fat. <laughs> That's not one you can keep, folks. Their second biggest fish of the day, probably, though. It's a nice quality fish, though. Nice. Walter. Another fish. Yeah, definitely snagged. Next cast. They're definitely firing up a little bit now with this wind. 16 to 17 inches or somewhere thereabouts. Next cast again, this one's definitely gonna be in the mouth because on the way down I felt that thump just like a jig bite. That's three in a row. It's a nice fish again. Nice 18 inch walleye. Definitely knew he was in the mouth. Sometimes, like I said, when it's falling like that, you'll feel a thump just like you will on a jig. Felt that hit on the way down. Just a really feisty one in the mouth. Nice fat fish though. Next cast again. Bit in the mouth, but he's skiing. The pelican's gonna try to get him. I better get him down. Ah! That pelican wanted that fish. Holy cow. Wish I had that on video. Never left spot lock from that fish. Next cast. He's a feisty one too. Feisty. Bit in the mouth again though. Feisty, feisty. Back on the move, first cast. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta move. There's just so many of these 17, 18 inch fish in here right now. Holy cow, it's crazy. An amazing gear class of fish. And when they start to get to be tanks, there's gonna be a lot of them left. We're gonna have another good tank cycle here and Two, three years. That's for certain. Well, nothing's for certain. Earth could get hit by a solar flare or something. Missed that one. 